Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Today we're here for day 20 of the Advent Ornament Challenge. So we're gonna do some words today. And while words are not necessarily my, my best strength, I think we can still pull this off. So if you happen to have something like Minted Aqua from Folk Art, great. But guess what? If you don't have it, we can still create this color. Another great color might be Key West from Apple Barrel um, or even Sea Breeze from Deco Art Americana. However, we're going to mix it. So I'm going to start with some white mermaid tail teal because we've been using this a lot and I figure we may as well just keep on going with that since I know you if you're doing some of these, you've already got it. And then the Irish moss. This is the one that I keep calling Christmas pickle. All right. So to make that mix, we're going to grab a big hunk of white, pop it out here on our palette. And then we're going to grab a little, little kiss of teal and smear it in and then a Slightly bigger kiss of the green. Just kind of mix and see where we are. So I probably got too much green in that. It's still very springy. So adding more teal to cool it down. Let's see, how are we in terms of tone? It's still pretty warm. So we'll add a little bit more teal to that. Again, it's still very dark, so we gotta go, we gotta take it down a ways. So I'm gonna take that one brush of paint, push it over here, and grab a big old hunk of white and mix it in. So sometimes it takes a takes a minute or two to kind of get your get your colors mixed, but instead of just continuing to add paint in one goop spot, you can sometimes sort of pull it off and keep going. So if I want to take it lighter, I just take one scoop out to the side and then add some white to it. And now feel like we've got about the right tone. Whoops, if I flip that over, then I'm in trouble. So, all right, so we've got now like a nice light color. All right, so hey, so Linda says, hey y'all. Hello, Linda from Texas. All right, now that we got our mixing done, we're gonna just give this guy that really light kind of coat of that pale, pale green. Whoops, I am gonna offload. A little bit of that extra like dark bright green which is kind of bleeding into my stuff although it doesn't really matter right because if i feel dissatisfied with this i can just add a little bit more white so we want this to be just off of white so i think i can even grab some more white and just kind of work it into into this to take it down even further i don't want this green tone to be totally overpowering it wants to be just a subtle kind of minty retro feel tone, I guess. When someone says, howdy, looking forward to seeing the end product. Me too. Well, I know what it's gonna look like. But this time I drew it in my journal and I didn't wanna like cut it out. So, so I didn't put it on camera. All right, let's give this a quick try. That way we don't have to mess with any of, any of that. So we're done with a larger brush. Go ahead and offload it on your junk mail or whatever it is you happen to have, you know tomorrow's recycling and rinse it that should be good oops okay all right so just rinsing 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 okay brush is good And let's, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna grab a pencil really quick here. I'm gonna draw this on here because we wanna kind of place this stuff. All right, so we're gonna do a gentle line kind of right across the top like an arc. Maybe draw a little circle at the end of that one. Can you guys see that okay? It's a little hard to see. I'll do another one here, a little circle here and an arc. And so each of those is going to be like a sprig. And then we're gonna write the word joy in between. So I'm gonna start with the O since it's in the middle. I figure my O is kind of right here. So I'm gonna make it almost slightly egg shaped and sort of like an upside down egg so that it's actually wider at the top and gets narrower at the bottom. And then we're gonna make a really, so we'll start here and here. I kind of wanna make some ticks as to where our bottoms are and where our tops are so that everything's aligning. Again, lettering is not my forte or my forte, or however the heck you pronounce it. All right, so we're gonna make a really shallow V. So way up high here, I'm just gonna kind of create that line like so. 
and then bring it down. Oh, Linda, you got your wooden ornaments today from Amazon. Awesome. And then it's so that Y is going to have a very long tail. And just like the J over here is going to be kind of short. And then it's going to, well, a short little tail at its tip and come way, way up. And then just a short little bit at the top, too. Okay. So now that we've got that kind of drawn in, it looks a little wonky, doesn't it? I think my O got my O got extra. Let's see if I can erase it a bit and kind of soften it just so I can see it. So I may have to tweak my background a little bit. We'll see. But that should be good for now. So go ahead and grab yourself. I think from here on out, we're fine line in it. So grab yourself something with a really, really fine point. And whoopsie, I had a text coming through. Bear with me, guys. I just want to clear it so I'm not missing anything. All right, so we will grab, oh, we need some black. So I always love the Deco Art Lamp Black Ebony, whatever you like to call it. Just plain, old fashioned, high functioning black. And to make it go a little smoother and a little less, so I just dipped my brush in the water. So there's, it's not super wet but it creates a little, little puddle. So I grab a bit smidge of black and I'm just kind of creating like a soft, loose, inky, I mean, sort of like in watercolors, it's still thick. But when you water it down a little bit, it allows things to go a little bit smoother. So we will just create that arc with a black line. And it's really hard to do in one fell swoop. So it's okay to pause. Lift up, grab a little bit of ink, and then come back. And I have a couple spots here where my line started to break a little. I'm going to rotate to here. I write at the base of that uh, thing, the ball, whatever it is. Now, if you have paint pens, you're in business. You could do all of this with a paint pen instead of having to mess with this. So part of me really wants to outline the, the leaves, but I think I'm gonna just skip that for now. So rinsing your brush, again, with a little guy like this, with a very, very delicate bristles, you're swooshing it in the water and you're not allowing those bristles to touch the bottom. Okay, so now we're going with the Irish moss. If you don't have Irish moss, sour apple is also a great, great option. I personally wanted mine to have just a little bit more yellow to it, and this one's a lot, it's got more yellow. And let's see, I need a shorter bristle brush. Let's see if I can do, how we do with this guy? Nope. Yeah, I think it's gonna, huh. my, my little brushes are misbehaving. I swear I treat them right, but. All right, so this guy's got short bristles. It's, it's splayed quite a bit, which is bugging me. So we'll go ahead and Place it in, in, the, in the green paint. Twist it a little bit. We're trying to get it to kind of come together into a point, but since it doesn't want to, we're just gonna use that to our advantage as we create leaves. So we will place kind of one on either side. We're literally just placing the brush down so that the bristles are out at the end and the neck or the, or the ferrule is right, comes right to the black stem. You're just going to lather, rinse, repeat. So these ones will be the V in that direction, and these ones will be the V in the opposite direction. So if you're watching the replay, you can either pause or fast forward or whatever, depending on if you're faster or slower than me at this. For real life, it's pretty much this. Just keep on flopping it down. I do like it because, you know, we're using the, kind of the brush shape. And so it gives a fairly even, consistent, consistent look. But honestly, it really reminds me of like the shape of the little tiny flowerlets in, in, a, in a lavender stalk. But whatever. Okay, here we go. And now from the other side, so we'll kind of create that V right up there near the top. And we will... Just keep going. And you can make yours really tight and close together. I like them kind of spaced out for this guy, personally. I'm trying to keep it even. 
Who knows if I'll be winning at that. This one's maybe got a little bit more spacing than the last one. Again. Oh, Linda shared or sprinkled. Thank you. For those of you who are like, what does sprinkle mean? It means she kindly um, shared this post with, with her friends. I much appreciate it. Thank you. It does help little tiny businesses like mine keep going and be able to kind of bring, bring these insane projects to you this often. All right. So from here, I'm going to paint each of these little balls on the end green as well. So I'm just kind of making a little... A little ball. Kind of debated that whether I should make it green or red, but we're going to add some red berries elsewhere. Okay, so we'll let that dry a little. I'm going to um, offload and rinse my brush. I believe we are done with the green for the duration. Although who knows, we might have some touch-ups to do if I try to outline this and mess it up. Now, if you're feeling like the green background and the green leaves are too much, you could also do the background just straight old plain white, or you could just, you know, go even lighter. Okay, so I'm going to put away my shorter bristle guy, and I'm going to go find now my longer bristle guy that we were just using, and we're breaking out the Tuscan Red. We are always using the Tuscan Red. Always using the Tuscan Red. All right, here we go. A little, little blop there. Ten times too much blop, but A-OK. -okay. All right, so we like the long bristle guy. And we're gonna try to do this right here. So just going right over those letters that we traced in place. I feel like I gotta get down on my elbows and deep breath and try to try to get it right here. So I'm kind of positioning myself so that it's directly, so I can literally just pull, and that's all the movement in the wrist. When it's just a movement in the wrist, it's much easier to get a nice pretty line. When you're forced to go side to side, that becomes a full forearm movement and it's a lot harder to keep it smooth and pretty. So whenever possible, you wanna isolate a precise movement to a flick of the wrist. You have way better motor control there. So now we have a cute little J. Okay, here we go. So. All right, so that's not going to be a salt, a fluid movement. You're going to have to break it into at least two. Now, this is not as smooth as I'd like. I'm going to have to come over it, but I wanted to get the main body of it going rather than trying to kind of meet it and then breaking it up into smaller pieces for the first round. Now I can add little bits to it and kind of smooth it out. I, I don't know if my explanation made sense but I feel like I have the opportunity to stay smoother if I at least get the initial guideline down. Um, and then I kind of stay within that paint and then just like the little bit of extra on my brush kind of help to, to tidy the lines. All right. All right. We got the O. Oh boy, you guys, I don't know. Since lettering's not my strength, that one's, that's always a little stressful. Okay, now we'll do the Y again. It's a shallow, a shallow V, a shallow wide V, way up there. Boop. Put your sound effects. And just a nice straight line right on down. Okay, we're keeping it very, very simple. I feel like it's a little bit elegant and a little bit whimsical. Kind of somewhere in the middle there. All right, now we can add some berries. And I'm just feeling like you can kind of sprinkle like 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 maybe a little three three dots of berries in and amongst this some twos you know whatever works for you two three and I don't feel that I have like a back oh you love my tablecloth this is actually wrapping paper I bought it years ago um, to protect my my table not from art but from children. And because I actually really like paper, like gift wrap is this, this tablecloth. All right, and then maybe one here and one here, and then do a couple of, so you notice I'm trying not to create a pattern. I'm 
trying to vary it up a little bit so it has that sort of randomy feel. So you've just got the little berries. Let me see if I can bring this up higher for better view, sort of, kind of. So I will tell you, I feel like I got my, my backgrounds a little bit too dark. If I were you, if you're not doing this live with me, make it even whiter. Make it whiter if you can. And then again, we're just going to add more of those berries on in there. Going for simple, right? Sometimes simple is like the best way to go. Maybe a single dot here, a three here, a one there, a two here. I might actually be creating a pattern now. Try not to. Trying to make it feel a little bit random, but also like it's kind of bursting with berries. Kind of holiday feel. And then, oh, okay, here we go. Now you could take the tail of one of your brushes, dip it in, and we could create kind of like sort of a bounding dot on either side. It's like a boundary. And what I'm trying to do is find that spot that's directly in the middle between the two sprigs. Um, so it, it sort of continues that circle and also more or less hits the midpoint for the joy. And mine are not exactly even, but good enough. Okay, so from here, I mean, you're, oh, you know what? I'm gonna put some highlights and things. I, I, wanna, I wanna fancy up my leaves, so I'm gonna rinse off my, my skinny brush. Also wiped off the red from the tail of the brush because you know, otherwise it'll end up on my clothing. And so just dipping directly into some white. And I think we can add like a little curvy curve on that kind of round, round bit there. And then we could do some just little, little highlight lines on the leaves, kind of keep them interesting. Originally I was gonna outline them in black, but I feel like this that would just be too tiny a work and you'd just be like ready to strangle me and be like, no, you, you suck Wendy, we don't want that. So here we go, just kind of some little bits of something to liven them up. I like that. It's a little less flat. It's a little bit, a little bit more, there's a little bit more richness for the eye to kind of capture. I love detail. And then I'll just rotate and do the other side. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Try to be consistent. Just little tiny kisses of detail. If you're feeling over ambitious, you could even add little tiny white dots to your little tiny red berries. But my fear is that um, you're just going to cover your entire berry. So probably better to just let them be let them be red. And if you want, you could probably add a couple of little highlights to the stem. Just a couple of little kisses. You want to be able to see the black on either side. So you're dragging the finest, tiniest amount of white. Little overlap here and there. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. Oh, Linda says so pretty. Thank you. I feel like yesterday we got a little extra, maybe a lot extra with a candy sugar plum house. So I thought maybe today we would we would go simple. So we uh, do a little something for everybody. Okay. So that's pretty much it. You know, this you have the opportunity while you're here. If you feel that the the, the word joy is too dark and you want to lighten it up, you can always just kind of get the tiniest amount of white mixed in with your with your red or even hot pink, you know, honestly. Hot pink is the coolest thing to red. It just makes it go kapow. I'm just going to stick with the white, though. Oh, dear. I feel like I have to sneeze. I hope I don't do well on there, but maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Bless you. Oh, okay. I 
Oof, all right, we got this. Oh, thank you, Linda. She says the Sugar Plum House was terrific. I really loved it too. Ooh, hey, there we go. Okay. I'm just going to say that I lightened that um, Tuscan Red with a little bit of white. And I feel like it's now kind of popping off, popping off the page. Which just means that that prior coat of paint was picking up a lot of the, the green undertones. And it was just feeling very, very dark. Tuscan Red is one of those interesting colors that, well, I use it a lot. It's very, very flexible. It mixes well with white, unlike the warm reds. In fact, here, I basically just lightened it. Yeah, that little bit of extra white really made, at least in my mind, a big difference. Because now I feel like it, it's, it's a little bit more obvious. A little bit more red, a little less brown looking. I'm gonna bring this guy down just a pinch, just a little kiss. Okay, there we go. I think we're good. You know, if you feel extra, you can always mess with the dots. You can mess with something, but I think we're at a really nice stopping point. Um, you could also even add little white highlights to the letters. Okay, now I feel like I need to add highlights to the letters. All right. <laughs> so if you think this is awesome right here, stop while you're ahead. I'm gonna try this one thing that I didn't try when I was testing it out. And if it's awful, well, I get to live with it. So watch before, watch before we go. And just little highlights here, just little. Yeah, I got it all wonky. So maybe we'll just kind of do like a little loopy loop across the top and a little loopy loop at the bottom. And most of this is on so I can tweak it. But I do like that on the Y. So let's see if we can get just a little bit here. I mean, on the, on the O, so just a little kiss here and there, just a little something. It kind of pops it, makes it a little bit more like a shiny, shiny something. Okay, I'm going to call it good. So thank you guys so much for joining me. We will see you again tomorrow for day 21. We have got an insane collection of ornaments. Hopefully you get a chance to do some of them. If you do all of them, oh my gosh, you're amazing. I know I've got at least one person, Cassie, who's doing them all with me. And it's phenomenal. In fact, she just kind of went off and did her own thing and came up with a really adorable design. I'm half tempted to be like, hey, Cassie. Can I do that with you? I really like it. Come paint that live for my, come paint that live on my page, please. <laughs> she's one of my new members. So she's really, um, she's been killing it. All right. But, so while I'm sitting here and yapping, I try to realize I got to get a little bit of gold at the top to just kind of give it that finished look. Always using the DecoArt Americana Extreme Sheen 24 karat. It's kind of your like no fail, awesome gold. There we go. There we go. Yes, it's gorgeous. Now, if you're feeling the need to add glitter, by all means, go for it. I would think that a little glitter along each of the sprigs would be perfect and let the rest of it kind of do its thing. I might have already had a fight with my jar of glitter today, so I'm kind of glittered out. I was working on a prototype for a project for my members. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me, and we will see you again tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye, guys.